My goodness, look at all them kids. I bet you we got had close 60, 70 kids here. Well, I thought when I mentioned eating, since they call us free meal Baptists anyway, we'd all just go up and leave. Good to see you tonight. I hope, I hope everybody is well. At least we're not either in the hospital or even worse at the uh, graveside. Uh, God give us another week of grace and mercy. And we're here to hit it again. And uh, certainly it's been a blessed, uh, a blessed week. And uh, getting better, thank God. Uh, the weeping has endured for the night, but joy certainly has come in the morning. So, so glad to see you. And uh, I want to turn to Psalms 23. Now, I only got one point the other night, on Wednesday night, if you was here. And I'm not going to be long before you. I don't want to bypass that first phrase in verse number 5 because I certainly want to touch on that last phrase, Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. I'm certainly glad that when uh, God comes on the scene, He overflows our cup and He gives us an overflowing of joy. Thank God for the joy of the Lord for it is our strength. I'm thankful that uh, I don't have to have anything in my circumstance in life to have joy in the Lord. A lot of folk, they're looking for happiness. Happiness derives from the Latin word hap, which says that something must happen to me in order for me to be happy. I'm glad I can be in a dark, dormant moment in my life, and all hell's broke loose. And Jesus comforting me and drying my tears... I can still have joy in the middle of all of it. Thank God for the joy. Hallelujah. Verse 5, Psalms 23, verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Oh, Lord have mercy. Last week we looked at uh, the, the phrase... Thou preparest a table before me, before the presence of mine enemies. We looked at the word table. And we realized that it wasn't just a regular table that David's talking about. He's talking about uh, the uh, grassy knolls of uh, the highland. We just had come through that valley. And now we're living up on top of the mountaintop. And we're eating from the green grass of, uh, that that knoll provides. I want to say to you, I'll reiterate this, you can never grow higher with the Lord without first going through the valley. Amen. You've got to go through those valley times. And I know there's many times that it feels like that everything in us is coming out, that we're going to lose our mind, have a nervous breakdown, amen, feel like giving up. But if you'll just hang on, thank God, if you'll just keep pressing on and keep trusting in the Lord, it won't be long, amen, that the Lord of the valley will become the Lord of the mountain, amen. Hallelujah. And he'll take us through those dark times, and he's leading us on up to higher ground. And so we're here tonight uh, uh, with, uh, with the Lord uh, on that higher ground. And we look at heaven's table, uh, uh, table land is not without problems. We understand that. We, we looked at the scripture and said there was enemies there. And certainly the devil is not going to let you climb up on top of the mountain. Amen. Without him fighting you. Amen. You just well to go ahead and put your dukes up and let the devil know that I know you're going to fight me. Amen. Uh, it's a certain uh, probability or a certain reasoning that Satan will fight you. you. You're not going to get out of this, Brother Danny, without a fight. You know, <laughs> all these folks say, oh, the devil don't ever bother me. It might be uh, that he's already got you and he don't need to fight you. 
Uh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm here to tell you we're in for a battle. Praise God greater that's he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm glad that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ which uh, strengthens me. I'm glad that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, many times we pray, can I just be real with you? We, we pray, Lord, don't let the enemy form the weapon. Amen. But let me say this, let him go ahead and form the weapon, but when it's all said and done, let the Lord confound the enemy. <laughs> You know, they'll scratch their head, and I tried this, and I've tried that, and that didn't work, and that didn't work. And I wonder why. I had a good plan, but my plan has failed. It's all because that the Holy Ghost. See, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, amen, the, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. I tell you, we got a protecting hand with God here today. And nothing, amen, can come against God's children when they're walking in step with Him. I'm glad tonight I'm on the winning side of the Lord. Amen. Praise His holy name. So we've seen heaven's table lamb land is not without problems. But also heaven's table land is not without its preparation. Look at what he said. Thou preparest a table. I mean, there was some preparing that took place by the Lord on those grassy knolls. Amen. Come on. The picture is that the shepherd and everything that I've ever read about the good shepherd of those days, they would take uh, trips periodically and they would climb that mountain and they would go up there and they would start, uh, like us old farmers, preparing it uh, for the, the plowing season and preparing it uh, for the planting season. Us farmers, we know that this farming ain't ever over, amen. Once you harvest, you got to go ahead and start getting ready for the next year. Well, the good shepherd knew, amen, by the time that they, they left off the grass, he know, back down to the valley, that he was going to have to begin to prepare. He's going to have to take care of all the poison weeds and, and, and all that, that comes with preparing the land. I'm here to tell you the Lord, amen, he's prepared the table. And he set us at the table. We don't have to do anything but to pull up and to eat from his grace hand. Thank God and, and enjoy the Lord. While we make it so hard, amen, tonight that we think that we have to do something, push through, amen, persevere. I'm here to tell you, thank God, the Lord has prepared a table for us to sit and dine with him. Amen. So we look at the work of the Lord, of the shepherd. Everything that the sheep enjoyed was because of the work of the shepherd. Amen. We're here today. Saved by grace. Not of ourselves. It's all because of Him. And salvation is all of the Lord tonight. I hear people all the time, well, what about me? Let me tell you about you. You was a defiled, decrepit, depraved sinner. That's what you were. You're without hope and without God. Amen. And had no hope whatsoever of ever finding salvation. But through the grace of God and through His loving hand, He come to where you was at. And He saved you and brought you up and washed you in His blood and filled you with His Spirit and gave you a hope beyond measure. Hallelujah. He done the work. How did he do the work? He went to Calvary. Amen. And shed his blood so that you and I might rest in the finished work of Christ. Amen. Therefore, there remaineth the rest of the people of God. You know what? I know a lot of people quote that. And they talk about, well, there's rest for us after we leave here. No. He's talking about rest now. I can rest in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That means I know for a shout of a doubt, I'm saved, I'm sealed, and I'm headed to heaven. And the devil can't do nothing about it. Amen. Woo! Why is that? Because I'm resting, amen, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll say this, I'm going to say it boldly. If I die and go to hell, I'm going to blame him. Amen. I'm doing exactly what he told me to do. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's all I've ever done. Amen? <laughs> 
So if I die and go to hell when I stand on judgment, it's your fault. But it ain't never going to happen. Hallelujah, I know. Listen, I preach I know sal salvation. I know that I know that I know. <laughs> Amen, that when I leave out of here, or we're at the rapture of the church, thank God, I'm going to be with him over in glory. These things I write unto thee that you may know that you have eternal life. This life is in his son. Where's it at? In his son. Was it in your work? Was it in your church membership? Amen. Was it in your good work? No. It's in his son. He that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the son hath not life. These things I write unto thee that you may know. <laughs> well, bless his name. I feel like preaching a little bit. See, the secret of living in that table, that table land, that heaven's table land, is resting in the shepherd. The shepherd has prepared it. Did you notice this? The sheep never did anything to prepare the meal. They didn't get up there and look for the weeds. They didn't get up there and look for the bears and prepare and everything. No, the good shepherd done that. Amen. We got to learn how to trust, completely trust, amen, in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example of how folks work themselves to death. There was an old farm boy went to the big city, had never seen an elevator. They hired him on as, you know, as a porter. And so he was trying to take care of being the porter by climbing the steps. It was 25 stories long. He's just a climbing and a climbing. After about a day or two, he come back to the boss. He said, I quit. He said, I can't handle climbing these stairs. And he said, son, what are you doing climbing the stairs? He said, well, that's the only way I can get up and down. He said, no, let me show you a better way. He said, you see this elevator right here? Punch the button and get on it. It'll take you to the 25th floor. I'm going to tell you something. Christ has told us. Let me show you a better way. Woo! Glory to God. There's a better way, amen, tonight than, uh, than to try to do it upon ourselves and, and to live upon ourselves and live it in our own strength, thank God. I'm here to tell you there's a better way living in the strength of Almighty God, abiding in Him and trusting in Him. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Many believers are running up and down the steps. And no wonder they wore out. No wonder they're discouraged. No wonder they feel like giving up on the ministry. Even because they're doing it themselves. Oh, I'm here to tell you, if you'll yoke up with God and yoke up with His Son, believe it in the finished work, well, I'm here to tell you, you can leave out of this old world, amen, in the ministry of Christ, with joy in your heart. <laughs> you don't have to endure this thing. i got a young lady at work. Bless her heart. She had more happiness when she was a sinner. <laughs> That's true. Walk around like you. She gets mad at me because I'm always laughing. She said, nobody can be that happy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. Murray Hart doeth good as a good medicine. And when you're trusted in the work of Christ and His finished work, why, you can put a smile on your face. Amen. And then we see not on the work of the shepherd, but we see the watchfulness of the shepherd. Now, my studies say that they go and look for the signs. In fact, they do like us old hunters. They, they look for the bear signs and the lion signs. They're going to make sure that when they take the sheep up the mountain, there ain't nothing there. The good shepherd's already, amen, escaped it out. Amen? <laughs> Why is that? Because sheep can't defend themselves. Look up here. I've said this before. We are compared to sheep. Sheep's not only dumb, and I know that don't go over too well, especially when you're an intellect, but when you're compared to God, you're dumber than a coal bucket. Amen? Amen. Einstein, who never knew Jesus, 
who never had gotten saved. I'm going to tell you something right now. Old country boy like me from over in Raikou, Virginia. Amen. Was a whole lot smarter than what he was. We're dumb, but yet we're defenseless. Listen to me. We can't, we can't fight this battle. We need the Holy Ghost. We need God from glory to fight the battle. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm here to tell you, quit trying to fight it on Facebook. <laughs> quit trying to fight it, amen, tonight on the, uh, on, on the Twitter. Thank God. Fight it on your knees. Fight it even tonight upon your prayer closet. And say, God, I can't handle this. You're the God of glory. You fight it for me. Amen. Amen. Woo! Somebody told me the other day, why don't you defend yourself? Preach well, I've got somebody bigger than me defending me. <laughs> it's what I found out. When a man's ways are pleasing unto the Lord, he even maketh his enemies to be at peace with him. You just keep serving God, looking towards the Lord, working for Him. There'll come a time, Lord, God will step in. He'll shut their mouth. Amen. I don't have to fight. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Well, bless His name. Let me say this. We don't have the, the power anyway to fight. If you really want to know, we don't have the power to fight. The devil's a whole lot smarter than you. I can't fight my flesh. I've got to turn it over to the Lord. Can can I just talk just just a brief second about the flesh? By all rights, church, we've been crucified with Christ. My flesh has been laid to a side. I have died with Him. But here's the thing. My flesh don't know that. Amen. Have you ever seen a dead person? You know, when they're dying, that body don't know it's dead. I see one woman tweaking, twerping, and the family saying, What's wrong with her? <laughs> you know, I mean, they was, a, they was a flopping in a... I've seen that. Why is that? Because the body don't know it's dead. You're saved. You're born again. This, this flesh has been crucified with Christ, but it don't know it. What you got to do to overcome this flesh is to look at it and say, you dead. The Bible said, reckon yourself dead to Christ and alive unto God. In other words, you got to remind it, you dead, I'm alive, I'm a new person. I ain't the same person that I used to be, amen. Woo, that's good preaching right there. Some of you are looking, oh, I don't know. The word reckon means I count it so. Amen. you got to look at your flesh every day. You know my worst enemies? And I, I swore up and down I wasn't going to get off on anything, but I'm going to. I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost. Every morning I wake up, you know who's my worst enemy? It ain't the devil. And it ain't you. It's me. When I would do good evils present within me. Quit blaming everybody else for your problems. Amen. Quit blaming everybody else, amen, for your failures. Look at the mirror and say, it's me, oh God, standing in the need of prayer. Come on. you got to reckon yourself dead unto God. Hallelujah. He's the, he's the watchfulness of the shepherd. Then heaven's table land is not without his presence. He is not only the one who is in the preparation but it cannot happen without his presence in other words you can't prepare I can't prepare we must have his presence let me tell you something if we're ever going to eat from God's table land and eat from that higher ground thank God it's going to have to be because he's in the midst I said this last week I know he's always omnipresent I know he's always there But what scares me to death is that when he doesn't manifest himself. Come on. God has already promised me he'd never leave me nor forsake me. But what scares me to death is that he would not ever manifest himself under the anointing of God. You know how bad it would be for your pastor to try to preach within himself? Woo, gosh, we would be in a mess. (laughs) You ain't never seen bad until I get in the flesh, amen. 
till I walk up here without the Lord. I know there's been times when I was a young preacher that I soared into the pulpit and I had to crawl out. But it's when I crawl in, thank God I can soar out. Because His presence is there. Amen. So He said, I'm going to prepare you a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It's in His presence. I got thinking about that, preparing a meal. I ain't much of a cook at all. <laughs> In fact, I burn water. <laughs> Never have been a good cook. But I can tell you right now, I have enjoyed some good meals that I didn't cook. I've sat in the living room going, boy, that smells good. Go in and get my hand smacked because I'm a sampling. When he prepares it, it's not that you've cooked. It's not that you've set the table. God has set the table. Amen. Only thing I do when I, when, when I come to eat, I just come to the table and enjoy myself. Amen? Listen to me. So I don't have to worry about the grocery list. That's what I like about not being able to cook. I don't have to worry about the grocery list, going to the Walmart. I don't have to worry about none of that. Amen? That is the job of the cooker, not the cookie. <laughs> Woo! Is that a word? <laughs> it is in Rye Cove. <laughs> Sherry told me the other night, she said, I finally found somebody up here we could understand. <laughs> I'm going to make you suffer with me for a while. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He has done the preparing. You know what God, God wants to prepare a table for this church tonight, Sunday morning. Listen to me. You don't have to come in here, work something up. He's prepared the table. Just pull up and dine and enjoy yourself in the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So first of all, God is the supply. He is the one that supplies all of my, of, of my provision. Amen. Now listen to me. A lot of times we don't understand that, boys, because we won't take credit for it. Amen, come on. You know one of the reasons I believe God ain't blessing some of our churches today? Because we got some folk won't take credit for what God's doing. Come on. Yeah, God's blessed, but look what I've done. I'm going to tell you something. If the true blessings of the Lord ever come, it'll simply be because He's poured out the supply. We're just an instrument. I've said this before. You know, there's a lot of folks that come by and they say, I appreciate you, Pastor. That's really going to go good on TV, ain't it? You know the reason I think we're in the top 20 on, uh, in, in the nation? Is they laugh at me. <laughs> I, believe, I, believe, I believe it's the comedy hour to them. <laughs> Uh, Lord have mercy. What was I going to say? Lord, that just... Whew. But it's the Lord Himself that does the work. You can't take credit for it. Amen. You can't take credit for it. It's like the old lady that was praying for food. And she was praying, God, supply my needs. God, supply my needs. Well, there was two old country boys who didn't even believe in God. They said, well, we're going to fool her. We're going to play with her a little bit. They went and bought her a bunch of groceries and laid it on her, st on her, uh, on her doorstep. And the old woman come out and she said, oh, glory to God, he supplied my need. And them old two boys, they jumped out and said, no, God didn't do it, we did. And she hollered, Oh, glory to God, it's an even greater miracle. You used two heathens to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
God, you can't be to no saint of God. Oh, Lord, He is supplies. I don't know about you. I don't want to ever take credit for what God's doing. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous into our eyes. Oh, He's a great and mighty God. Not only that, God is not only our supply, but He is the source. Do you not know that He is the source of everything that we have here? In life itself? You know... David understood that the very basic need of provision was supplied by God. And it goes with anything in life. Now take a look at our meal. When it all comes back, it all comes back to the Lord. Now, I go buy the vegetables at the grocery store, but the grocery store gets it from the distributor, Brother Tim Scooter, Tim. <laughs> Tim Scooter. But the distributor's got to go to the farmer's market, or the farmers. But where do the farmers get it? The seed's got to be sowed. And the water's got to be given. And it's got to come up. And they got to harvest it. Where do you think it come from? God is the source of all our provisions. Hallelujah. That's why you should never, ever, ever eat before you give thanksgiving to God. Amen. When, when you really understand that God is the source and the supply of all your provisions, it won't be hard to pray over your food. And it won't be some little quick, you know, through the teeth and over the gums, look out, here it comes, you know. When you understand... <laughs> You had never heard of that? I love playing with the cranky Yankee, honey. Her eyeballs about popped out. But you'll be thankful when you understand that the beef that, that you're eating that day came from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not only give you the money to buy it, but he gave you the beef in which to eat and the teeth to eat it with. Huh? You ever seen a toothless man trying to eat beef? It's funny. <laughs> Rick, Rick says, I crossed the line there, brother. <laughs> I said that before I thought. I forgot that Rick had every tooth in his head pulled out. Well, let me ask you the question. <laughs> well, why is it that we can be so grateful to the person that waits on us, but we can't be grateful to the one who gave it to us? We'll give the waiter and, or the waitress a bigger tip than we will God. Come on, I'm talking to you. I want us to see that every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of heights without a shadow turning. And then we give Him glory and praise. I had an old dog one time, old back several years ago. His name was King Solomon. He acted like it. And uh, I fed that dog from the time he was a puppy until he was a lab what he was, a big old dog. He never had to buy his food. He never didn't have to hunt for it. It was there. One morning, I came out to the garage. I was feeding him, and I got a little bit too closer to him, and he, he forgot one important principle, that I was his provider. Amen. He snapped at me. And that's a wrong thing to do to the master. Sometimes I honestly feel like that we forget who is doing the providing. That dog devil had to work for nothing. I petted him. I loved him. I fed him. I watered him. He had it made. And all he got was the pound. <laughs> 
Don't owe me. Amen. Oh, some of you bleeding heart women, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Poor little old dog. Let him bite you. <laughs> oh, let me. Here I am, I'm telling you. Not only that, God is our strength. I want you to look what he says. And he prepares before me, uh, uh, prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. He is my strength. You know, simply what he's saying is, regardless of your circumstances and who comes before you, I have prepared the table. Amen. That, doesn't, that means that it doesn't matter what comes against you. If God prepares the table, and if God is for you, who can be against you? Now, I look this word, this Hebrew word for enemy up. An enemy is anything that threatens... Our sustenance or our security. Our enemy is anything that tries to get in our way of our needs and our progressions or threatens our well-being. Somebody say, Amen. You're going to face a lot of them. If you're going to serve God and go for God and work for God, you're going to have obstacles. I get so tickled at some of these young Christian first little obstacle that comes along. Amen. Whoop! I'm gone. Out of here. Sad thing is, we got Christian been saved for 40 years. Out of here. Looking for a perfect church. I told one fellow that one time. When I'm looking for a perfect church, I said, please don't join it. Why not? You join it, you'll ruin it. Amen. You ain't going to find one here. You got to learn how to stick it out. Fight the good fight of faith. I, there's a young couple that comes here on Sunday morning. They came to me when they first started coming. Their church was bad. And, and, uh, and I told them, they said, I just want to get out of that mess and come down here and be with you. I said, do me a favor. Wait till it gets good again because it will. And if God's still going to lead you out of there after it gets good, leave. But don't leave while it's in a mess. Ain't that good advice? You stick it out. Because I'm going to tell you something, God's going to breathe again. If, it gets, if it's bad, he'll breathe again. God will breathe on it again. When God's people begin to pray, seek God's face, get things in order, God will breathe on it again. And if you want to leave, you, you know, go. But don't leave in a mess. Now, that's good advice. I don't care what nobody said. Let me say this to you. He'll prepare me in the presence of my enemies in spite of all of it. God's bigger than the economy. You, you know, we're we looking at this mess, us heading into Syria and all that. I'll be honest with you, youngins, I'm a jumping up for joy. You know why? Because time's drawing nigh. It's fixing. I'm here to tell you right now. I don't want to run a rabbit here, but we're ready to head out of here, thank God. When I see those armies from the north and those from the east gathering against little old Israel and threatening that they're going to do, if we do this, they're going to do that, I'm saying, come on, God, let's do this. Let's get out of here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, he, in spite of the economy and the stock market and the wars and the rumors of wars, and in spite of all of it, thank God he's bigger than it all. Amen. He's not subject to any of that. Hallelujah. Let, let me throw this in. God knows how to move the obstacles. Amen. Now, every time we try to get involved in it, we mess it up. Amen. But God knows how to move the obstacles. I, I thought about this when, when, uh, when I was studying on this. Back half a century ago, in the time of desegregation, I remember down in Alabama and some of those other places, they were totally against letting black folks or black youngins come to school. 
Evidently, over in Bloomingdale, they're still against it. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I apologize. I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, and, and some of the state legislatures, and you know, they'd try to block it. They'd stand in front of the doors. But what tickled me to death is, is when the U.S. Marshals and the National Guard would roll into town. And no matter how bad that they thought they were, they couldn't fight them. Why is that? Well, thank God they were bigger. <laughs> they had more power. They had the President of the United States behind them. I'm going to tell you something right now. Thank God we got somebody bigger than all the obstacles that's backing us, that's pushing us forward. <laughs> Lord, sometimes I get plumb ashamed of myself of, of the fear that goes through my mind and my heart. And then I get to thinking, look who's on my side. <laughs> yeah. You know, Martin Luther said it like this, the, the great reformer. Martin Luther said, you know, I don't think I'd ever fear if the Lord was still here on this earth. Then all of a sudden, faith jumped up and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said he's nearer than just being here on earth. He's living on the inside of me. What have I got to fear? I got God living in me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I get plumb ashamed of myself sometimes. Let me close. I'm going to get you out of here before Duck Dynasty comes up. <laughs> Heaven's table, table land is not without provisions. And I'll close with this. That word table just simply means to spread out. Now here's the picture. Them little old sheep are climbing up that side of that mountain following the shepherd. And they don't know what to expect. But when they top that grassy knoll and they see that great big old table land, I guarantee you them little old sheep got excited because God had prepared or the good shepherd had prepared for them, amen, a blessing. I'm going to tell you something right now. Just hang on. God has prepared you a blessing. It's coming. I can feel it. And just hang on, thank God. And when we'll top the door, we'll say the Lord has prepared the table. Come and dine and eat with me. I'll close. Why does he prepare those tables? Some of you are weak because of the battle. You're weary. You're troubled. But he's going to let you eat for a while and get your strength back. Get your faith where it needs to be. Amen. He's going to give you some peace for a while. Now, this is not going to last forever. Look up here. It won't last forever. The storm, the storm will come again. I ain't going to, I'm not sitting up here going to paint you a pretty picture. You'll never have to go through another storm. No, the storm's over. We're, we're going to live in that sunshine for a while. But just as sure as I'm here, the storm will come again. Go ahead and gird up, thank God. Oh, let me clip. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. There was a man. There was two men that built their house. One was built on a solid rock. And one was built on the sinking sand. Man, One was built in the obedience of the Word of God. The other one was built upon intellect. One was built with the storm in mind. One was built thinking that it was sunny today, and it's always going to be sunny. Come on now. The ones that will stand in the last days are the ones who built their home on the solid rock. The God of glory upon the solid rock that I stand on. And when the storms come, like the old uh, the, the wolf, he huffed and he puffed. And he blew that house down. That one that's built on the rock, it's going to stand. 
if you'll build it upon the foundation of God, no matter how bad it's going to get, listen to me, listen, look up here, we're headed for rough times. I know it's bad now, but when those end times truly come, when we're nearing to the shore of glory, and the Holy Ghost begins to withdraw Himself, come on, we ain't seen bad yet. But you know what I like about it? The same God, amen, that brought Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through it, thank God's the same God that's going to bring us through it. Amen. Bless his name. I don't know what to do next. Pray, Al, we'll go home. Pray, Al. I'm done.